Sagittarius singles, super singles, completely singles. Welcome to meet the soulmate read for mid-November. Singles read to do here. I'm at the uh, studio in the Cancun urban jungle. I don't know how much you can see uh, with it being night. Um, it's really nice here. I started out this morning, I had to even put on long pants, guys. It's crazy. It's getting too cold. I hear it might even go below 70. So, um, hopefully it'll be quiet here. Uh, it's pretty peaceful. And this reading is a uh, always positive read because I'm simply asking who's the one that's right for Sagittarius? Who's soulmate? I think there's lots of soulmates. Who do you have? A god, a source, however you look at it. Who do you have available that's the best choice for a Sagittarius single? Super single, totally single, completely single. Because I feel like, you know, this is a, a golden time when you're really single. It's an opportunity, it's an openness. Uh, it can be really special and it's it can be an invitation if you want to be i think that's what this is involves um and we're asking your soulmate to land you're leaving them space now on the runway you're like hey i'm here and so i want to meet them get to know them um, i'm going to look at stories more uh childhood um things they may say uh, aspects of personality and behavior that kind of thing I don't read the bottom of the deck on this reading at all, guys. So, I'm going to look at the emotional first aspect with two cards. Seven of Swords. Remember, this is only describing your person. Nobody's breaking up or sneaking around on you. And uh, Nine of Cups. So, emotional. Seven of Swords and Nine of Cups. Let me see here, guys. Let me look at the intellectual cards. I'm just going to have the Page of Wands. E or C your person over the wheel of fortune that's Jupiter we've got a Sagittarius Sun uh, with the Scorpio moon ah, I'm seeing a Scorpio moon in a while yeah this person has a Sagittarius Sun very most likely in the ninth house so they make them an aries rising so i think we may have their rising because i really feel like it's it's in the ninth house so an aries rising scorpio moon the moon's in detriment there um sun like sad's just fine there's nothing special but it's fire sign perfectly at home in the Wheel of Fortune, which makes me think it's uh, maybe in the ninth, that it might even be well aspected to Jupiter in some way. Well aspected, uh, you know, trine or sextile, um, possibly a conjunction. Um, but imagine Jupiter at home and Sagittarius conjunct the Sagittarius Sun. So, let's see. This is going to be their sexual and love nature. Seven of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. Wow. So Capricorn, Venus, and Capricorn, Mars. So next, I'm going to look at the four pillars. The last pillar is going to be the core values and lifestyle, I'll call it. And it's the four pillars of relationship. So let's look at this four pillars of them. Um, yeah, your person had a difficult childhood. Um, they probably had to move numerous times. Um, there was, uh, in terms of how they lived and where they lived, they might not have been real comfortable. But I think this Nine of Cups, too, it shows uh, probably a single parent um, that was uh, kind of uh, selfish, frankly. So, uh, I didn't say that they would have a wonderful childhood. I said they would be the right one for you. I had a terrible childhood. I think I'm the right one for someone. Um, so, this parent uh, may still be alive. I get the feeling, too, um, their parent, I'm saying one, uh, it was young when they had your soulmate here. Don't ask, I'm drinking milk, leche. 
now it's night for me, you know. So, their sun's looking at the moon. You know, and the fact that they got Mars and Venus and Capricorn, this is a really well-balanced person. I mean, as looking at their astrology uh, off the bat, and um, I think the Scorpio moon may serve them well here. There's two general ways to read the Seven of Swords. One's cheating, lying, and stealing, and the other's strategic thinking. And this brings to your person strategic thinking. Frankly, I'm strong Sagittarius. Jupiter's the great benefic. You have a Sagittarius here, well-placed sun, um, with the benefic attached to it, I believe, and probably in the ninth house, gives it more dignity. Um, so this is probably, as a, they were just always a sweet child, sweet-natured child. Uh, someone that's not gonna hold on to things, and it's gonna roll with things, and someone, frankly, who can just forgive, you know? Um, even with a Scorpio moon, they will never forget. They probably have a wickedly good memory, too, come to think of it. As an astrologer, I've noticed with the Scorpio, Mercury's, and the moon, particularly when both are there, they, they sometimes have eidetic kind of memories, you know, 97% recall and all that. Um, but, like, they don't use it against people you know they use it to avoid problems they're probably very smart like if this person if you're with them and they're saying to you well i think that couple over there has got some kind of issue around such and such and pretty much take it to the bank they got that scorpio way of looking at it and with the capricorn venus and mars um and the seven of pentacles shows for them they're very much about reciprocation in terms of love, that's how their Capricorn Venus is. Um, they, they, ex they uh, Venus expresses how we love and how we want to be loved. They ex it expresses the experience of love and our human form, me being a Scorpio. <laughs> uh, here, your person, Venus and Capricorn. So they both want to work. They want love to be something that is committed, long-term, solid, structured, um, that works frankly, and they want you to work too. They want to feel like you always, this is not a person that's going to be comfortable in a relationship where you guys don't really know where you're going. Like, we're going to save this amount of money. We're going to get a house by next year. Um, you you know, it, they would work, um, uh, work, work very well with Aries energy too, but this person would probably work well with sun um, energy um, as well. Um, you know, it doesn't always work with Sag, Sag on Sag, but I, I, it hasn't for me, but it, they say it's magical, and it does, you know, I, it makes total sense to me. Now, Mars and Capricorn, um, they're just aimed to please in terms of sex and being very, um, kind of grounded kind of energy. Um, it's a little interesting, it's like, you know, you may see with them, uh, when they get into a sexual position, that the fire sort of dies down and they, I mean, they might actually sort of more initiate through cuddling or holding or tenderness or this kind of passion. Something draws you in close, uh, skin to skin contact, um, uh, being very sensual and physical, this person, um, and, and slow. Just think of a Clapton with slow hand, you know? Not typically what you would associate with the Sagittarius here. But remember, the Sagittarius card is temperance, which came up uh, uh, through the reading. I uh, didn't uh, pull it, but when I shuffled it, I noticed it twice. Our card. Three of Swords. Again, don't be triggered. No one's breaking up with you. But this is in their um, core values and lifestyle. So when I see this here... There's someone that, you know, it's a thing now where people are quitting, apparently. Uh, um, and this person, that's a lifestyle for them. Like, if and you could count on this in terms of love, in terms of relationship, in terms of work, very much in terms of career. Um, if, if they don't like it, they, they're they done. They're just like, I quit. It, they, they will not put energy into something their heart's not into. 
Ten of Pentacles. See this Capricorn energy, Venus and Mars. Venus is desire. Mars is how do you get what you desire? And what do they have the Ten of Pentacles in their lifestyle? So this is someone they could take care of themselves. I think they came up through the ranks. They're hardworking. Um, they, they, you know, um, they've earned this Ten of Pentacles, you know, the hard way. Um, the only major kind of here we have is the Wheel of Fortune. And I'm pretty sure that represents Jupiter for them. So you get this kind of person that's, uh, you know, they probably have very strong beliefs. Um, and they have a certain way of doing things with the Seven of Pentacles. Um, and they probably have believe it works, you know. They could probably point out to you a story. They might tell us, well, if you do this, and I notice, and you do that, and then I as if like a relationship is like this climbing for them, like the goat climbing up the mountain. You put your foot here and have a methodology for a relationship or something um, that they might follow um, as well. Uh, and I think they'll just have a very clever mind too. That we'll probably notice on a date, like um, quirky. Um, you'll see the fire in them again. That's why I think like in the bedroom, it's like whoosh, the fire goes down, the earth energy comes up, and that's basically what you're having sex with, this like this strong earth energy here. Um, but you, you would have been experienced, the, the sads, the fire, huh? Um, and with the Scorpio moon, that, that really influences this Mars. Um, so this is someone that's, um, they, you know, you could uh, say they kind of take sex seriously. I really take love seriously. It's kind of same deal for them, Capricorn, Capricorn. So um, they're not playing around. Um, and with the Seven of Swords add into that, uh, representing a Scorpio uh, moon that's all about um, strategic thinking. I mean, they're going to go right into your soul. And this very well could be the person too, guys. Remember, this is a predictive read. I think there's someone coming. I don't think someone's in your life now. This is for mid-November time frame. Here we are. Um, but they could have that piercing look in their eyes. You more would associate that with Scorpio, I think, than Sag. Not the sparkly Sag glow, you know, uh, but that Scorpionic, like, look, where they just kind of, like, look in your eyes, and they're like, you know, you know that they know. You know that they know, you, they just saw you in there and you're like, holy shit, they see me in there. This person that sees people and I think they, they recognize it in their eyes, you will, uh, but I think uh, most people do, because uh, they do. So thank you guys, give me a like, thumbs up, tell a friend, tell a friend, do appreciate it if you subscribe if you haven't, and hit the bell, thank you.